There are some pretty crazy stories out there that astronauts have told. There are tales of near disasters, talk of extraterrestrials, and some astronauts have even claimed to see organic life floating around the space station. There's even a completely bizarre story of a US Marine who says that there are human bases on Mars and were at war with one of the species. It's hard to say what's real and what's fantasy these days, but the story of the astronaut who was abandoned on Mars and the US government tried to hide it is something that might be told for ages. Before we begin, make sure you hit that subscribe button to get notified every day for more amazing content. With that being said, let's begin. NASA astronaut reveals encounter with alien-like object on space shuttle. It might sound like the plot to a Hollywood science fiction movie, but an astronaut claims to have seen an organic, alien-like creature on the space shuttle. Leland Melvin says that he spotted the creature in the payload bay of the space shuttle Atlantis, which was in orbit above the Earth at the time. When he spoke to NASA about what he saw, the NASA Space Agency experts told Melvin that he had probably seen ice that had broken off from the space shuttle and it was floating shards of ice that caught his eye. Melvin then replied to this explanation but says that he had seen something translucent, curved, and organic looking while he was working with fellow astronaut Randy Bresnik. But our friend Scott C. Waring, the ufologist, said that these are alien life forms and that NASA is trying to cover it up. Melvin dismissed claims by the UFO enthusiasts that NASA had a cover up going, but did admit you never know. And according to Scott, this is not the first time that NASA has been accused of covering up evidence of extraterrestrials. Many objects snapped near the International Space Station have been said to be of alien origin by many conspiracy theorists. NASA astronaut Scott Kelly's cryptic messages about seeing aliens in space. NASA astronaut Scott Kelly has tried to quietly and discreetly tell the world that he saw aliens during the year he spent in space. A video that was shared online had suggested that the US astronaut, who spent 340 days on the International Space Station, which by the way is the longest stay on the station, was just itching to tell the world about what he saw. But because of an alleged cover-up by NASA, he had to tell everyone in a subtle way as to not attract attention to himself. In the video, it's said that Kelly made two bizarre comments regarding extraterrestrials. However, it's unclear whether Kelly was actually joking or being completely serious. It appeared quite strange that he would mention aliens in response to an important question about his mental and physical adjustment in space. In the interview, Kelly had said, I think coming back to gravity is harder than leaving gravity, so maybe the aliens got it a lot easier than we do. Bob Kerbeam got covered in toxic ammonia during a spacewalk. Bob Kerbeam was no stranger to spacewalking when he had been installing upgrades on the International Space Station. But as he was working, a cooling line had broken and sprayed toxic ammonia all over his spacesuit. Of course, the first thing that Kerbeam did was to try and stop the leak. He then needed to figure out how he was going to get back into the space shuttle without bringing in the volatile ammonia contaminating his spacesuit. Kerbeam handled the leak with no problems. The next problem was the contamination. But some good old fashioned science helped with that one. What he knew was that ammonia has a low boiling point, so he just needed to somehow vaporize it off his suit. In space, there's a lot of radiation that comes from the sun. So to pull this off, he simply baked himself in the sun's direct light for 30 minutes which is arguably one of the most terrifying sunbathing methods a human can experience. And without the suit, he'd be like a toasted marshmallow. A fellow astronaut brushed off the suit and equipment, and to be 100% sure, the astronauts partially vented the shuttle's airlock. Nothing made its way in, and Kerbeam added more time to his already impressive cumulative spacewalk time. Would you think that it would be scary to be trapped in space? What if Bob wasn't able to get the ammonia off his suit? Jerry Lininger's dinner was interrupted by the worst fire ever sustained by an orbiting spacecraft. Astronaut Jerry Lininger was in the middle of an extended stay on the MERS space station when a catastrophic fire broke out and threatened what was meant to be the longest period for an American astronaut spent in space. 
Things went from normal to chaotic in just a split second when a tank full of concentrated combustible oxygen-based chemicals caught on fire and turned into a huge, unstoppable fire. It was pretty much the worst case scenario for both the astronauts and cosmonauts on the Mir. The fire raged for 14 long minutes as Linninger and the rest of the crew made sure that secondary fires didn't start by dousing things in its path with fire extinguishers. The flames ended up eating the chemical, melted the container, and melted insulation. As the three astronauts were fighting the fire, the other three crew members were preparing the Soyuz for an emergency escape just in case. But there was just one problem. One of the two Soyuz ships were blocked by the fire, meaning that only three of the six people aboard would have been able to escape the Mer. Luckily for the crew, they were able to finally keep the fire from spreading until it burned itself out. The story of the astronaut who was abandoned on Mars and the U.S. government tried to hide it. In a very strange story, a U.S. Marine named Randy Kramer claimed that he had spent 17 long years living on Mars and was completely abandoned by NASA. Kramer said he first landed on Mars at Ares Prime and worked at a station there called Forward Zebra. He went on to claim that the Martian facilities are underground and are well hidden from any satellites or cameras. He also said that despite what many scientists want you to believe, the Martian surface is mostly habitable and does not require any special suits. Randy also had claimed that not only was the Martian air breathable, but he could also walk on the planet without a spacesuit. Kramer claimed that it occasionally snowed on the planet, but that it falls a lot slower on Mars than on Earth. Randy said that while on Mars, he had the occasional interaction with two different native Martian species. One was reptilian and the other was insectoid. He then went on to say that there's an entire colony of humans on the planet which has been living there for a thousand years. Apparently, the humans are locked in war with the reptilian species. A diabolical plan from the reptilian army wiped out two human colonies. And here's the strangest part. Kramer was among the casualties of this war. Scott Parazinski was risking electrocution and a suit fire in order to save some important solar panels. Scott Parazinski ended up performing some hero-level spacewalking when a jammed solar panel threatened the safety of the entire International Space Station crew and the ISS itself. The mission objective was to install a new research laboratories module on the space station as an addition to expand operations. Because of this new addition, the other part of the mission required changing and moving an array of solar panels. It was during this operation that the problem occurred, and 72 hours of trying to figure out what to do, NASA finally came up with a plan. The plan would have Parazinski traveling further away from the safety of an airlock. Parazinski explained that there was a real danger that they could do even worse damage to the space station. Then there was the potential of risk to himself because if there was any metal-to-metal -metal connection with the solar panel or arcing, it could actually electrocute him or cause ignition of the 100% oxygen in his spacesuit. Despite these incredible dangers, the mission was a success. Chris Hadfield's distance and space sensors failed 30 seconds before a high-precision docking with the Mir space station. During astronaut Chris Hadfield's first flight into space, he and his fellow crew had to navigate the space shuttle toward a target about the size of a small plate on the Mir space station. Hadfield's job was to relay the speed and range information to the pilot as they moved towards the target that they were docking. The thing is, they only had a two minute window to dock, and they had to be traveling just a tenth of a foot per second. Failure to implement this correct speed would be catastrophic. When the space shuttle was around 30 feet away, two sensors which measured distance failed and were giving the wrong readings. The problem is, no one knew which one was right and which one was wrong. If the astronauts on board the shuttle didn't solve the problem within the next 30 seconds, there would be a big problem. Hadfield went back to basics, forgetting the sensors. He knew what the docking module's dimensions were and used his thumb to eyeball the distance through the window of the shuttle. According to his calculations, they were 21 feet away, not 32 feet. He then used his stopwatch and pulled off some quick math to figure out how fast the shuttle was moving and when they should fire thrusters. 
They ended up being spot on and hit the docking target at the correct speed with just three seconds to spare. So Yan Yi and her crew had to ask nomadic shepherds if they had a cell phone because a re-entry malfunction put the crew nearly 300 miles off course. Soyeon Yi was the first Korean astronaut to go to space, and was celebrating a successful and productive visit to the International Space Station as she boarded a Russian Soyuz spacecraft to return to Earth. Things were looking good, but then something went wrong. The detachment of the Soyuz from the ISS had problems, and when it finally left the station, the crew were on a less than desirable course. They were coming in too steep and too fast, which was creating immense heat. A big struggle ensued at that point because the force of gravity was overwhelming, especially on those who had spent time in space. After they landed, the crew had to crawl out of the spacecraft on their own. It was then that Kazakhstani nomadic herders came across what must have looked like an otherworldly scene right out of a science fiction movie. The astronauts then asked the nomads if they had a smartphone or a cell phone. After realizing no one knew where they were, the crew went back into the Soyuz and used a GPS and satellite phone to make contact with the RSA. After some time, a helicopter located the crew, who were off their landing target by 300 miles. Chinese astronaut heard a mysterious knock outside of his ship. The very first Chinese astronaut in space, Yang Liwei, had a very spooky experience during his first flight into space, where he claims that he heard someone, or something, knocking on the space capsule's door. The knock didn't seem to come from the outside nor the inside of the spaceship, but instead sounded like someone was knocking on the body of the spaceship and sounded like someone was hammering on a wooden bucket. That might sound really strange, but other astronauts have also claimed to hear this strange knocking in space. Of course, this sound made Li Wei very nervous, and he moved around the ship so he could look through the porthole to see if there was something on the spacecraft. But Li Wei saw nothing. Upon returning to Earth, Yang tried to see if he could emulate the sound he heard to NASA engineers in hopes that they would be able to solve the mystery. However, no one has ever been able to explain the strange phenomenon. Apollo astronauts heard mysterious music on the far side of the moon. The Apollo astronauts who orbited the moon two months before Neil Armstrong's famous 1969 landing heard mysterious, unexplainable music on the moon's far side. It was too far out of the range for earthly radio transmissions, and many people have dubbed this event alien moon music. The music started once the space capsule was on its hour-long journey around the far side of the moon and clearly out of the range of any Earth broadcast. At one point, the confused astronauts can be heard discussing whether they should tell NASA or not. The creepy thing is that the sounds lasted almost the entire hour that the spacecraft was on the far side of the moon. And back on Earth, the recording was shelved by NASA until 2008. Despite the massive amount of conspiracy theories, the sound was likely nothing more than interference between the radios on two different modules. But Apollo 15 astronaut Al Worden wasn't convinced by this explanation. He explained that the Apollo 10 crew was very used to that noise, and this was something different. What do you think about these stories? Is someone covering things up? Is there really alien life? Let us know in the comments. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.